This is episode 11 of Quantum Bible and it's really sophisticated. So that's why the screen is so confusing. When I say Quantum Bible, I mean like in quantum mechanics, in physics, you take the pieces and see how they fit together. It's the same idea. And in Bible there is this mechanism of establishing the meaning of prophecy which was known at the time it was written and from what I can tell during the first century but after that people forgot how to do it but you can if you count the syllables in scripture you can see how to do it so that's what we're going to do here top line is what this is so complicated because this is like a four-way like GPS Let's see if I can get rid of that of how these prophecies all interlink by syllable counts. Now, you know, this is the 171st video of the playlist. I showed you the methodology starting with the first video in the playlist. So hopefully you're familiar with it by now, but if not, hopefully you can get a little bit of sense of how this thing works starting now. Matthew 24:25 is up here at the top window. Okay? There are four, three other chapters that relate to it. Actually four, but I'm not going to show them all because obviously I don't have enough room. There's another one, Ephesians 1, that tags Matthew using syllable counts. This is Luke. It was the second in chronological order, or perhaps Ephesians the second in chronological order. I haven't yet determined what month of 58 A.D., Luke came out in versus Ephesians, but it was 58 AD for both of them. Same thing for the book of James. They datelined their books. We're going to go through that a little bit here. But Luke is second, and you're going to have to memorize this because I'm going to have to get rid of the heading that shows Matthew before I get into the verses. So this is Matthew in the top window. This is Luke. You can download the documents from the video description. All of them are there, so you don't have to just look at the screen. Third in chronological order is Mark 13, and the fourth one is Revelation 17. Now, each one of these passages is dealing with the same content, a repetition or a tagging of the content that Matthew 24 and 25 covers, which is about the last days. Okay, the last days is a massive period of time. It isn't just like now. Yes, now is the last days. That was also true 200 years ago, 2,000 years ago. Okay, so when you hear all these people telling you, and it's really common every time we come upon an anniversary of Christ's death, because the 2,000th anniversary of his death is coming in 2030, everybody gets all nervous and screwball, approximately every 500 years, and says, oh, the Lord is going to come back, and we've got this sign in the sky, and then they abuse scripture and twist it to mean what they want it to say, la la la. So you're going to be hearing a lot of that. This is going to show you why you don't need to worry about it. Because when you see the precision of how this works, you're going to realize two things right away. Yes, the Lord meant what he said when you can't know when it's going to be the rapture. And the rapture is the kickoff for the tribulation, so you don't know when the end of the world is going to be. Okay, that's what this chapter is all about. Acts 1 confirms it. The Lord was dead and resurrected when he said that in Acts 1. And notice he's no longer saying he doesn't know when it is. This chapter of Matthew 24 is going to say he didn't know. But he hadn't died yet when he says this. He dies two weeks after he says this in Matthew. But after he's dead and he comes back, it's Acts 1. And he says it's not for you to know the day or the times. Go look it up in Acts 1 in your favorite translation. You'll see it yourself. So that's why there is a Matthew 24, 25, a Luke 21, which is parallel in content to Matthew, a Mark 13, which is also parallel, and Revelation 17, which is also parallel in tagging. Because you don't know when the rapture is going to happen, but you do need to know what time it is. So long as you're still here, you have to know the future of the world so you know how to orient to the Word. Because your job is salt of the earth, 
And your job is to have that Bible and keep it and take it with you wherever you go. It's an update on the command that God gave to Moses in Deuteronomy 6 and 30. Wear it on your head, wear it on your arms. Meaning that no matter what you think and what you do, you should have Bible in you at all times. Okay, but it's written out for us now. So you have to carry it. Okay, but do you know where the, you need to leave where you are? Or stay where you are? Well, that's what these prophecies are for. So you know what time it is. Okay? And they interlock. In other words, through these meter counts. See, there's 17 showing here. I'll get into that in a minute. Okay, through the meter counts. See, there's a meter count. This is 17. This is 24. Why are they different if they're talking about the same thing? Okay, this is Revelation written much later. And this is 10. Why is that number different? Well, there's a way to know why. And that's what these numbers are designed to help you do. It's like, I don't know, um, balancing a checkbook. It's very prosaic. Because you have to know what time it is, because you've got to know where history is going, so, you ought to, so that you can know if you should be going somewhere. Because so long as the rapture has not yet occurred, you have to know the will of God for your life geographically as well as every other way. So this is to tell you. Okay, that's what it's for. Ephesians 1 is the same thing. Each one of these Bible chapters has a certain focus. All of them are about believe or know what time it is. Okay? But each one of these passages specializes in a certain area that interlocks. Okay, this is the granddaddy. Matthew 24, 25 is global. Its focus is the democratization of Bible. How Bible will get kidnapped and then be freed up throughout history. And it includes our time. This, this Matthew 24, 25, as hopefully you've seen me explain in other videos, goes all the way to 32, 43 AD. That does not mean that's when time ends. There's a reason why he stops it there that has to do with the Talmud. And when I get there, I'll explain that. But it's basically the Talmud in Sanhedrin 97 through 99 is talking about 7,000 years. That's not the allotment of history. Okay, it's a sort of, uh, what do you want to call it, paradigm. And the Jews have since gotten that all screwed up and they think it's the, the allotment of history. In other words, they're waiting for the year 6,000 to occur. It's already occurred. Okay, they're waiting for the year 6,000 to occur because they think Messiah will come back. That is an old shibboleth that has been around for uh, going back to origin. O-R-I-G-E-N, 217 A.D. That idea has been around since then. Maybe earlier, but it's not biblical. So, Christ is playing on a paradigm of 7,000. That's why he ends it at 3243 AD because given the year he died which was 4136 after Adam's fall when you add the two of them together you get um, 7350 minus 7 or 7350 right, you add them up because right now I'm half asleep when I'm talking but you add up 3243 and 4130 let's just do it instead of me being lazy too 4136, according to the Bible's own dates, which no scholar ever tabulates properly, that was when Christ died. Going using just the Bible's numbers, which the Bible only uses solar years, and then the terminus in um, Matthew 25 is 3243. Oh, I did that wrong. Wait a minute. I have to subtract 30. There we go. Yeah. 7350. Okay, it says 49 because you because of the fiscal year. There's a fiscal year differential. In other words, 7349 is the last of the year. 7350 would be the beginning. So it's the same thing. Okay, so he's that's a paradigm because the Bible's timing is 1050, which that's timing starts in Genesis 1. That's the total number of syllables in Genesis 1. 
It's a deliberate accounting that God uses throughout Scripture, so of course it had to start in Genesis 1. You multiply that by 7, and you get 7350. You see how that goes? Okay, so by terminating it at the end of 7349, that's the same thing as saying the beginning of 7350. You get that. That's what Christ is doing, is he's adding the year he's going to die, because Matthew 26 tells you that, you know, that's the, the next... The, the next chapter that's when he goes to the cross and dies alright so he's talking two weeks prior to that here so that's why Christ m numbered it like that so it includes our time these other chapters however are, have a different focus each one of them so they aren't talking about our time except generically in other words, you got the text, it's about the end times, it applies to across the board to all the end times as trends, but in terms of specific years, it's got a secondary usage so that you can see what your time is going to be like as part of the paradigm. For us, that's Matthew 25, 11, and 12, which if you look at my 40-second video in this series, you'll start to see that. Okay? So Matthew 24, 25 is global and it goes all the way to the end of the paradigm. That does not mean again that time is going to end at the end of the paradigm because it's a paradigm. Okay? It's, it's a, it's a, it was a kind of expression that the rabbis used before Christ came. And so he's playing on what they know. Okay? Now that's the focus of Matthew. It's global. It's about the, the kidnapping and democratization of Bible. It's about a worldwide rollout of Bible. Okay? And how people are going to react to it. Whether they're going to be salty, meaning they're eating the word. Or saltless, meaning they're rejecting the word. And you got to know that because if they're rejecting the word in your area, you need to leave. Okay? If people are rejecting the word in your time, in the years that you're alive, you need to know that so you, need, so you know who to avoid. Okay, it's really relevant for you to know, like for example, right now, church has gone saltless. And I'll be returning to that later. But that's in Matthew 25, 11 and 12, covers our time now. Matthew 25, 11, the very start of the second Lord in that verse, is 2017. Our time, our year, right now. And if you look at the whole clause, okay, that that phrase that, that Lord, Lord is in, it's about foolish virgins banging on the door of politics thinking that's going to get them in with God. Yeah, and the name of the movement doing that in the United States is called Seven Mountains. It has spread all over the world at this point. I didn't know that when I first made the video a year ago. It's also in Russia with a different name, Third Rome. I didn't know any of that a year ago when I first started this series. Okay? I had no idea that there was a worldwide movement that's just like the Seven Mountains Christians. Google on Seven Mountains or just search it even in YouTube. Find out what that is. It's horrible. It's a unity of church and state push. It's going on in Russia. It's going on all over the world right now. So... Matthew 24 being global, and Matthew 25 being global, it properly belongs there. But, how do I know that what I just told you is true? I know it because the prior ways that this whole text is structured is explained further in Luke, Mark, and Revelation. And they only cover the first 1,000 years. So what you have to do, if you were at the time in Matthew, you'd be charting the whole thing. But since it's past for us, I can go back to that past, find out what Luke was hitting on, Mark was hitting on, Revelation was hitting on, and they tag Matthew, each, each one of them do. And then I know how to interpret Matthew for past the 1,000 year mark. Okay? Now, what does Luke then specialize in? Well, like Paul, Paul covered the first 490 years of church. I did those videos, I found out about that uh, eight years ago almost. 
they're in my Paul Meter GGS 11 channel in Vimeo until I can move them over here. I also did them in YouTube as a Paul Meter channel, but it's not as cutely organized as it is in Vimeo right now. I'll fix it. What I didn't know when I made those videos is that Paul was hitting on Matthew also. Okay, and earlier videos in this playlist show you something of how I'm thinking Paul played on Matthew, but I might be wrong there. I'm going to revisit it later. The same year as Paul wrote Ephesians, Luke wrote his gospel. And Luke's specialty is the first thousand years of Western Christianity. In other words, the Gauls, Britain, what we now call France and Germany, Italy, that's Luke's specialty and he goes up to the first thousand years of that. I have not yet made detailed videos showing how he does that. Okay, so right now sort of like Okay, well, Brainout says this. I'll be skeptical until I hear proof. Okay? Because I haven't made these videos yet. But I have made the videos on Mark. They're earlier in the playlist. Mark's specialty is Eastern Christianity. There are two Romes. This is what people forget. There were two Romes, not one. Everybody thinks Rome is Italy Rome. No, no, no. Constantinople was originally baptized by Constantine as New Rome and he literally rebuilt down to the seven hills that are in Revelation. He built this up to this literal seven hills and everything else. He built it in Byzantium. That Rome lasted a thousand years. Long after official Western Roman Empire fell. Okay, it's that Rome that Revelation is focused on, not Italy. And for centuries now, conventional Christian theology has said, oh, it's Roman Italy, the Catholic Church. No, that's not its focus. Okay, not, I'm not saying Catholic Church might not be part of that final harlot of Babylon, but that's not the... the the geographic focus of the chapter in Revelation. And if you saw my um, Quantum Bible, Bible episode 10, you've already seen this. You've seen me show this. How we know it's Constantinople, not Italy. That's the focus of Revelation. Okay? Mark, therefore, is dealing with Eastern Rome, the Byzantine Empire. It's a prophecy of how the Byzantine Empire is going to go all the way up to what in history we call the First Phoenician War in the 1300s. So Mark goes a little bit farther than Luke and in a different geological, different geographical location. They all start out in the same place, Rome and Italy, before it went Christian. They end up at different places with a different focus from the time of the fall of Western Rome onward. Okay, they diverge. Okay, so Paul handled up until the fall of Western Rome. Luke goes past that to show the, the emergent, you know, what do you want to call it, barbarian kingdoms and how they adopted the Bible or rejected it. Mark is on the eastern side and he's going from the time of, you know, starting at the same point as Matthew and Luke but he's diverging to the Eastern Rome. And I've done the videos on that. The, the text is so fitting for the history of Eastern Rome that it, it's, it's almost painful to see how accurate it is. It's accurate, it's biting, and it's satirical. So Mark videos are, are you know, largely done. I'm, I might have to fix some parts of it. But it's largely done with links that you can verify, like, for example... Um, here, I, there are specific names of them, okay, like, where is it, well, I know for sure when you click here, see, you have links to these people, and I've already covered some of them already in the videos, 
Why doesn't that eBay go back to the first 14? Okay. I'm going to have to edit some of the the links because they should have gone back where they sh to the proper places. So hopefully, you know, not too far from when you see this video, I will have fixed this so that when it goes to the link, you can click on the link and it'll come back. But the point is there are independent links to each of the emperors being mocked. Okay? It's very specific. It's very precise in Mark. I haven't done that yet with Luke. I have done that with Matthew. See how precise it is? All these little links up here at the top. Um, I haven't done that with Luke, but I have done that in part with Mark, and it looks like I have some mistakes. The point is this is Eastern. See, Luke is Western for the first thousand years, just like Paul in Ephesians 1 is also Western for the first 490 years. And Mark is going to the end of the Byz Byzantine, the effective end of the Byzantine Empire, which we always call 1453, but its actual effective end was after the First Venetian War, which you can talk to any historian, they'll tell you that. That's how they consider it to be the effective end of the empire. And now Revelation, by contrast, like Matthew, Revelation is global too, but it only goes through the first thousand years. Now I did my Revelation uh, sarcasm tour, and I did the Quantum Bible episode um, 1 through 10 on focusing on what's called the anaphoric center of Revelation, which started at verse 6 starts here at verse 6 and went through verse 8 and I went through syllable by syllable to show you you know what emperor was involved why these purple marks are um, specific sarcastic biting statements about the people who were the rulers at that time and I went syllable by syllable on this so that you could test it see that's a, an independent link to Constantius that's an independent link, link about Byzantium and all these things are independent links so that you can find out for yourself the validity of them and test this because my whole focus in this playlist is to show you methodology not take my word for it I don't want you taking my word for it you're not going to grow spiritually if you take my word for it you're only going to grow spiritually if you study this yourself okay you grow spiritually when you study under your pastor teacher but after you study under your pastor teacher you have to use what you learned okay so how do you use what you learned well one way could be to play off some other believers using what that believer learned that's what I'm doing I need to do this for me and I'm I, I do a more virtuous job of it if I have to present it publicly so that's why I do these videos I'm not doing it to convert you or sell you. I'm doing it for my own due diligence. Okay? So Revelation covers the first thousand years on a global basis, just like Matthew does. And each of these chapters, Revelation, Mark, Luke, literally tag Matthew 24 and 25 by syllable counts. And that's what we'll cover in the next increment.